Hi, I'm Linnea, aka Fifal, as I'm known on the internet. I'm an artist, an illustrator, whatever I draw for a living. This is my sketchbook, my loving sketchbook. I like to say that all good sketchbooks are supposed to be chaotic and just filled to the brim with all kinds of stickers. To kind of get a positive vibe going, so as soon as I open my sketchbook and I see these stickers, I feel inspired to create. This one's made by my friend, and I like my cat, some Moomin, some Kaiba, you know? all things I love and enjoy. So first off, it's a moleskin, by the way. We love their paper. They're quite expensive, but since I I don't use my sketchbook every day, I'm not much of a sketcher. So for me, it was like worth a splurging on a bit of a fancier sketchbook. Starting off, just a quick portrait. I think I drew this on an airplane, so my hand was a little bit shaky. The first page of a sketchbook is always the most difficult one to kind of break into, because you put this pressure on yourself that it has to like look cool. So I was happy to get that one over with. More character portrayals, you know, I love a good flowing line. I love thick lines as well, like thick line weights. You'll see this all along the sketchbook that is mostly women, girls doing girl things. This is a piece that I colored digitally actually. So I just wanted to make like the outlines and then I would like to take, take a photo of the illustration and then I would color it um, all in Procreate. Just, and it's so easy, you just take a photo of your sketch and then you deal with the mess of watercolors. Cute, love bunnies, I love snakes, I love cute girls, I love bones. Another self-indulgent one. I really love the teeth necklace that I made on this one. I draw the outfits that I wish I could wear or wish that existed in real life or that I'm too lazy or too shy to actually wear. I love the thick arms on this one. I love a girthy, girthy forearm. Since I'm not much of a sketcher, really, it's mostly just warm up or when I'm kind of trying to um, do some super quick visualization for something. And I'm like, okay, I just want to, I just want to kind of figure out how this shape would work. But it's quite rare that I sit down and like finish a proper sketch. This one, I kind of wanted to, uh, this is like an ink illustration that I was working on. And I wanted to figure it out how I was gonna draw the wispy elements in the background. More thick forearms. I think this is kind of around the time where I started experimenting more with exaggerating the anatomy. If you've seen the anime Kaiba, it's always been like a huge style inspiration for me. They really do add like thickness to their limbs. It's a very goofy feeling to it. And it's such an underrated gem. Yeah, a lot of like marshmallow bodies. Yeah, oh my God, that's a perfect, perfect description for it. I rarely see fan art of Kaiba. So, you know, watch Kaiba, make fan art of it. It needs a reboost in popularity. Oh, this is the first time I think I'm drawing something that isn't just a girl. We have a centaur going on. See, occasionally I like to challenge myself by drawing something non-human. It's one of those rare cases. People often ask me like, oh, Linnea, you draw so many characters. Like, what did you use them for a comic? And for me, making character designs or like uh, character drawings has never been about putting them into an actual story because I'm useless at actual storytelling, like uh, writing and stuff. I just want to make cute people doing like wearing cute outfits. And then it's so surface level. It really doesn't go any, any beyond that. <laughs> Some bodies, soft shapes, marshmallow bodies. Cute fashion girlies, quintessential FIFA, some fish, some girls. Our first mushroom drawing. I think this one I made for my Funguary zine. This is kind of like the thank you at the final page. What's your routine for using your sketchbook? These days I do I kind of want to make more uh, good sketches because I, I think at the beginning of the sketchbook, I was just so into drawing digitally that I completely neglected actual physical drawing. I'm so art blocked, I just gotta do something, right? And so I do something super quick and easy. Uh, whereas these days I do try to kind of render more, do more hatching and stuff. I always start off with kind of just like, no thoughts, just throwing in a shape at the paper and then kind of, it's kind of like a conversation, right? I'm usually I don't have a fully visualized, visualized idea of what I want to make. I kind of just make it up as I go. And if I see like one shape working particularly well, I can add on to that and more. And that's kind of how I work with all of my illustrations. Some perspective. I think I'm doing math here. I'm not really sure what's going on. Sometimes I write notes that I'm like, these are so important. These are. Future Linnea must remember this important message. But then like one week later, I'm like, what? What's going on? I think also I was being quite art blocked at this point. You can see the hesitation in my lines just going over and over again. I think 
It's pretty interesting to see that if I'm in a mood where I'm very into a feeling that it's easier to draw, I kind of tend to like super intuitively, I can land the lines on the first moments. But then if I'm more stressed out, if I'm like kind of forcing myself to draw, I'm just like kind of going over the same movement over and over again, like I have in these two. I do think they turn out quite nice. I don't dislike the sketchiness. I don't dislike the roughness. It almost feels weird when I see them afterwards because I can almost kind of tell the emotional turmoil I was uh, going through just looking at this. Coffee came by and gave me a free gold pen and it just happened to be like the best gold pen I've ever tried. You'll see here. I really like that gold pen, you guys. So of course I had to utilize it for everything. This one's just like a quick falling star. A full on animal, I'm quite proud of myself. A lot of good hatching, you know, a lot of good sketchy feel to it. Especially when you do more dark stuff like this, adding an element of gold and keeping some of the whites in really brings out the contrast in the piece. Some unicorns. Usually I never draw unicorns because one thing about me is that I, I'm really scared of horses. They're like the tractors of animals. They're just this huge muscular beast. Whenever I see them, I just get so confused by their anatomy. I think it's because they have like such short fur. You can just see all their, all their muscles working beyond the surface and it freaks me out. But um, unicorns, I like though. Unicorns, I like. <laughs> this is kind of around the time where I started sketching more seriously. So I feel, I feel like this first half, I'm almost embarrassed to show it. Usually this is, this is like what people don't see, but I wanted to be completely candid and you know, show what's going on behind the scenes, behind the pretty illustrations. Whereas the latter ones here, I'm like, I actually, you know, give in a smidge bit more of an effort. I really like this one. It's uh, I think I had no plan what I was making when I first started um, sketching on this. I just was in the mood to draw multiple wings. And then I think the ball, I think they drew the wings first and just the lion body came in afterwards. Girl with a selfie. I can't lose my branding, you know? This is a bit of more of a um, conceptual one, maybe. I was thinking about how we are controlled by our hearts. So I wanted to do it in the literal sense. It's not something I would post, because usually when I make illustrations, I like them to be kind of a snapshot into a story that you can kind of look and be like, okay, I get the lore, I get what's going on. Whereas this one's a bit too avant-garde for my usual stuff. But that's what sketchbooks are for, you know, they're all for like quick explorations. Moving on, we have rats. One thing about me is I, I love rats. I had multiple rats growing up and uh, this is my little ode to them. I wish I was better at drawing rodents. I feel like I should be drawing more rats. Whenever people tell me they're getting like a bunny or a hamster, I'm like, why would you get the worst type of rodents? It's rats are where it's at. They are so intelligent. When I was in middle school, I used to sneak my pet rat into my shirt sleeve because she was so tame, right? It's so cuddly. And I just sneak her into, and she would just like stay there and snuggle with me while I was um, uh, drawing during classes, you know, misbehaving. I've been meaning to color this one. Two people, you know, gazing into each other's eyes and the kind of the exchange of atoms or cells kind of melding into one exchanging facial goop. This is a banger, guys. A gutted bunny. I don't have a vendetta against bunnies. I don't want them dead. They are like the ultimate prey animal, I think. Like you see a bunny or a lamb and you think that's a victim. This one's going to the slaughterhouse. So they're very symbolic in that way. Usually I don't do fan art, but um, Twilight, you know, the movie that everyone hates or the book series that I happen to be obsessed with, it just got uh, announced that it was, uh, it's like getting an animated series. So I was like, okay, Linnea, you never make fan art, but you gotta draw your girl Alice for a moment, you know, give her her flowers. Ooh, now this was nice, you know? I tried with this one, guys. This was like a multiple hours drawing. I had just bought a bunch of new um, graphite pens, you know, the soft ones. Cause usually I just like, ah, whatever. I'll just get like the cheapest mechanical pencil and go at it. But now I got like actual fancy pens. So I'm like, oh, you know what? I'm gonna do the proper shading. Gonna add some nice darkness to it. And then um, get some soft blending in there as well. You know, smudge with my fingertips, all those cool art techniques. This one, a mechanical pen for sure. Pop of color, can't go wrong. Some tigers. Uh, these were really fun to draw, actually. I used the reference for these. I get bored quite easily when I follow a reference too closely. 
So I still wanted to add like a nice flowy pattern to the fur. Kind of like ink being dripped in, like dripping into water, right? And it's swirling. And it just adds like an elegance to them. This one's stupid. It's, uh, <laughs> it looked really cool in my brain. I think when I first made it, I'm like, oh, this is going to be so, such a cute twat idea. Basically, her brain is exposed and it spells you because you are on her mind. You know, brain, mind. Anyway, it's done. We're moving on. <laughs> Here we have girls, bugs, some uh, intestines for uh, hair deco, and an intestine halo. We got teeth, bacterial action going on, and a bug. You may not like it, but this is the ideal woman right here. <laughs> it started off as just me painting my cats, but then I got bored, so I wanted to add some alien elements into it and just kind of, you know, give a good swirling effect. And, uh, oh, I think this is the first time I took out my watercolors for like uh, a year. So this is a, uh, honestly, I was surprised by how much, uh, how much I liked it. So this one's kind of inspiring me to go back into watercolor. All right, here we have a uh, serial experimental lane fan art, you know, one of my favorites, very weird, very disturbing, kind of avant-garde. It actually is supposed to be viewed like this with her normal self here. And this is like her digital computer version of herself in the wire. I love the idea of being able to switch out your heads. The one thing that bothers me about this one that I don't know if anyone else would think about this is just that their heads, the head sizes of all the different animals are the same. Whereas in reality, they'd be like vastly different, right? It's just one of those things that you're like, hmm, some things. I mean, it obviously it was supposed to be a realistic drawing, but still I feel like there's, hmm, something. I got a girl hiding in a tree. We got a starry fox or um, a wolf. A lot of good hatching on this one, you know, I'm quite glad. This is uh, in Swedish, it's Ibland är det okej att inte utmana sig själv. Which translates to, sometimes it's fine to not challenge yourself. Do you know when you're art block, you kind of feel like everything you touch turns into utter garbage? So that's why I like to just really go back to the simplest essence of what I know by heart to make and then kind of get my mojo, slowly build my mojo back up from there. This is a nice reminder of that. And here we have bunnies. Slightly gory, I guess, not too gory. This one though, I wanted it to be a regular body, but then kind of these two blocks kind of separating and uh, everything except for like the guts and her bones being what's left. If I developed it a bit more, it might turn into a cool idea, but as it is now, it's kind of, you know, it's a work in progress. Oh, this one's very much inspired by Natalie Hall, legendary sketch artist, but also tattoo artist, makes the best kind of creatures. This one's a bird, but with five legs. It started off with just me drawing a dead bird. As per usual, I kind of got bored by the realism. So I started like adding more and more legs until um, it became these beasts. But now it doesn't feel dead anymore. It feels more like a creature of vengeance, you know, something you'd be scared of. I think this, this is the final page actually, so we come full circle. I actually drew this while I was at Lightbox, you know, because I have a table here. And so during slow hours, I just mindlessly doodle some girls. You know, one great thing about being an artist is that you're never cruelly bored. You can just pick up a, pick up a pencil and sketch away. And uh, this is a perfect example of me doing just that, you know, no thoughts, no brains, just kind of like doing. And then of course, the ending which is more stickers, of course. You saw that I only had stickers on the front? No, of course I got a deck out the back as well, you know? So we have some Dance Dance Revolution. This one's a classic, Moomin. So in your sketchbook, I saw a lot of um, gradients from like white to black with your characters. Yeah. Have you tried doing the opposite where you have a black background in your characters so like the light part of it? I have done that for sure. I think usually it's more when I do digitally because then it's less, you know, painting involved. I can just color drop a black, uh, background. I actually think it's easier on the eyes to kind of go from dark and brighter um, and it gets a more gloomy kind of feel to it for sure. But not in sketchbook though just because I know that I my my hand tends to smudge the pages so whenever I go too heavy on the graphite it just ends into it like a gray monochrome mess. <laughs> you had a lot of darker themes, do you think you gravitate towards those darker themes? I like to kind of balance a lot of dark and gory art in my work because I'm extremely fascinated by death and the process of decay and just kind of the ending of life, like the life cycles and stuff. 
but I don't want it to be too dark, too much of a shock value. So I do always kind of throw in like an ethereal cutesy vibe to everything that I make because at the end of the day, I don't make death related or dark stuff because I'm necessarily attracted to the evilness of it. I just kind of want to highlight the beauty that is uh, found with these, these things. And uh, by adding that contrast, that really dark with the, with the beautiful and pretty, I feel like they both bring out the best in each other. Nice, thank you. What's your favorite and least favorite part of drawing? Like at least in your sketchbook. Oh, I hate having to start a drawing. Oh, it's the worst. I think, especially if I haven't drawn for a while and I build up this like dread over having to, um, having to like face a blank canvas, right? But I think once I do get a good process going, I get my mojo in, uh, I get involved in the, like, I get like sucked into the process. I start enjoying it until I start laying out like the base colors. Then I start hating it again because I can't like, it just, cause when you look, when you put on the first layer of coloring, it always tends to look bad until you that render it out and, you know, fix out the kinks. But then eventually you get to the final stage of a painting. And that's when you kind of start to enjoy the process again, because then you can add like the fun details, the, uh, the the highlights, the cool whips of hair blowing in the wind. So it's kind of like a start from the bottom, it goes up, it goes down again, and then it goes up. So don't feel bad if your sketchbook isn't super refined. I feel like they're more of a visual diary for artists and uh, you don't have to show them if you don't want to. I used to be extremely self-conscious about my sketchbook processes. I used to be so ashamed that they don't want to, anyone to see my mistakes or my explorations. But I think that's a beautiful part that you shouldn't, you know, it's fine to keep your sketchbook private, but it also is fun to just kind of let it go of that shame and um, let, let other, others into your thought process. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. It's been lovely. If you're missing a solid foundation of drawing knowledge, it's really tough to stay motivated and fill up sketchbooks. Join us in the Drawing Basics course, where I teach you the fundamentals of drawing that you can start applying right now. Improve your lines, shapes, perspective, and shading with fun projects that will get you drawing better than ever before. Join me at proco.com slash drawing. And if you want to see my newly launched sketchbook and hand anatomy books, head over to proco.com slash kickstarter. It's already fully funded, and I can't wait to get them in your hands.